few months back, a business owner asked me how I felt about social media schedulers. Now, if you're not familiar, a social media scheduler is a piece of software that you can use to come up with a whole bunch of posts all at once and schedule them to drip out on various platforms day by day in the future. If you're just a casual user of social media, you have absolutely no use for one of these things. You just post when you have something to say, or otherwise you're just scrolling along, laughing at memes, looking at baby pictures, and trying to ignore that uncle's latest rant. But for business owners and creatives, social media schedulers promise the possibility of being everywhere online every day in order to promote your business without the soul-crushing, time-consuming task of actually being everywhere online every day to promote your business. Social media schedulers give us a way to pay down our content debt. Every day that you believe you should be posting to Facebook or LinkedIn, Instagram or TikTok, it all adds up on your content debt balance sheet. And many small business owners today are deeply in the red. And content debt is a lot like financial debt in that it weighs on the decisions that we make and the strategies we choose. Imagine if your paycheck depended on what you posted to Instagram daily, the funny reels or TikToks that you make, the videos that you upload to YouTube perfectly suited to what other people are searching for. Not to mention your weekly newsletter, your new connections on LinkedIn, and the Facebook Lives you do for your free Facebook group, all to satisfy an algorithm. Pretty bleak, right? But that's reality for so many small business owners today. So how do I feel about social media schedulers? Not a fan, I told this business owner. And that might be surprising, because I'm a business owner twice over. I'm a marketer. I am here because I use social media and content marketing. And so it could seem like I would want to use any tool that would allow me to make that all happen in less time and less hassle. But the way I see it, social media schedulers incentivize us to create more and more forgettable content all to pay down our mounting debt. And I'm ready to declare bankruptcy and start fresh. So why do so many business owners, influencers, and creators feel this pressure to be constantly posting? Two big reasons. First, tech companies have built business models around our free labor, and marketers have built business, uh, business models training us how to do that free labor so that we can find the freedom in building an audience and selling that audience's attention. We end up believing that we have to be constantly working the system to feel like we're not working at all. And that leads to the other reason. Why is it that we end up agreeing to all this free labor and taking on all of this debt? Traditional ways of working have failed us over and over again. Our current economic and social systems have created a state of utter precarity. Creators and business owners don't feel the pressure to constantly create loads of forgettable content because they see an opportunity. They feel it because they're trying to escape the uncertainty that swirls around their bills, their careers, and their families. Crappy jobs just keep getting crappier. Wages are stagnant, benefits are non-existent, student loans threaten to topple even the highest achievers, and our work days get longer and longer as work bleeds into every corner of our lives. And so a whole generation, and then some, is willing to try to pull themselves up by their bootstraps by selling themselves online through the social media marketplace. It can feel like the choice is to keep cranking out content or end up living in the proverbial van down by the river, which is not, it should be said, the same thing as hashtag van life. 
Now, I know it is the height of privilege for me to stand up here and talk to you about the demands of building an audience or a business online. And many of us do come from white, middle, upper middle class families. We've got degrees and plenty of experience in corporate America. And many of us, far more than you might expect, feel forced into making a living this way because it seems like there are no other good options. Some of us belong to groups whose labor has been exploited generation after generation. And some of us are the moms who have been forced out of the jobs that we've trained for, the recent grads who pick up a side hustle just to pay the student loans, or even the folks just a couple of years from retirement who have been unfairly aged out of their careers. All of us, for one reason or many, feel unstable enough to go all in on laboring to satisfy an algorithm every day. And it's not working. The pressure to create and create and create isn't meeting individual needs in the way it's been sold. It's certainly not creating stability when these platforms are constantly changing the rules on us. When one person can come along and disagree with us, or doesn't like our race, gender, or sexuality, and upend everything we've built with a single nasty comment or reported post. No, the endless hustle is just replicating the same system that's causing us all to burn out. We're constantly working, constantly producing, constantly trying to do something valuable just so that we don't fall behind. We haven't created some sort of liberated, democratized approach to earning a living. We've just reproduced the same conditions we sought to escape. Now, my solution isn't to give up on social media or building businesses. I love the internet, and I love doing business there. So instead, I propose content debt forgiveness. As business owners and creators, we can forget the quotas and the optimization and the mediocrity that comes from pandering for likes and shares, and instead focus on the remarkable. Now, if you're not a business owner or a creator, you might be starting to wonder, all right, but what in the world does this have to do with me? Why should you care about the pressure to churn out the digital equivalent of a live, laugh, love sign on a daily basis? Here's why. This whole system is impacting the ways that you interact online, too. It's the same quantity over quality attitude that has business owners scrambling to be everywhere online every day that's also making your online experiences, at best, decidedly mediocre. And of course, it doesn't stop with the online world. Even if you don't feel the pressure to create something likable every day, as Gia Tolentino writes, you still live in the world that this internet has created, a world in which selfhood has become capitalism's last natural resource. What could it look like if our small business owners and creatives could spend more time plugging into our communities, both online and offline, and less time putting themselves out there with market-tested messages and metric-optimized posts? Now, I've had a front row seat watching small business owners go head to head with the algorithms, noise, and misinformation. It's hard to get noticed, let alone to find a new customer. So I get why creating more, posting more, and showing up on more platforms seems like the answer. I understand the motivation to produce more and more mediocre content to keep up with the market. But here's what I know that many small business owners don't know. Some of the most successful small business owners in my community don't care at all about social media or building an audience or really anything that looks like online marketing. What they really care about is doing remarkable work. And creating remarkable work helps to create the stability that we all crave. Remarkable work creates tangible results. It inspires word-of-mouth marketing. It builds fruitful relationships. So the question I've been asking in various forms to the small business owners that I work with is, 
If creating remarkable experiences, results, products, or content can actually create the stability that you're really looking for, what's preventing you from doing that? And often, I hear that the main thing standing between them and the time to create remarkable things is the endless pressure to churn out mediocre things. And that's when the light bulb starts to blink on. That's when they realize that they don't have to do it that way after all. Now, at this point, some of these business owners do log off of social media for good so that they can focus on building remarkable businesses. But plenty of us, like me, stick around and approach things very, very differently. I no longer allow FOMO to dictate what I create or communicate online. I don't crank out content just to satisfy the demands of platforms and algorithms, trying to get my malevolent social overlords to bestow a few more followers on me so I can feel secure another day. Over the last five years, I've been investigating how I want to show up in public spaces online, how I want to market my businesses and share my ideas without contributing to the noise. I've tried a bunch of different approaches, but where I've landed is to focus on creating remarkable content. For me, that's podcast episodes, articles, visual essays for Instagram, curated newsletters. I'm focused on ideas and conversations instead of tactics, algorithms, or platforms. I want to put ideas out into the world that get people talking. I want to share stories that encourage others to share their own. I want to become a part of the conversation without, as my friend Sarah Avenir put it, becoming ensnared by it, trapped by algorithms, gimmicks, and fads. I'm focused on remarkability instead of ubiquity. For me, prioritizing posting less but better has created an incredible confluence of creative satisfaction and business results. And it would be easy to quantify these results by telling you that my audience has grown, that I see more likes and shares every day, that more people are becoming customers. And all of that is true, but those are just the vanity metrics of this same system. Here's the real benefit, relief. When I started to share this approach with my clients and followers, they told me how relieved they were to let go of everything they thought they knew about online marketing. They've told me they've changed the way they create and consume. They're giving themselves permission to linger on ideas and make them stronger. They're taking the time and space to create remarkable things and learning what remarkable actually means to them. They're enjoying the process and feeling much less stress about what they're putting out online. They're feeling less precarious in their day-to-day -day work. And just like me, they're proud of what they're putting out into the world and the impact that it's having on people they care about. And if that means creating and posting a little less in order to create and share better, so be it. And when creators and business owners are creating and sharing more remarkable things, it means you get to engage with more remarkable things. It means we can have a more remarkable public dialogue we can have less mindless scrolling and more mindful exploration. Your timeline does not have to just be the place you go when you're bored. It can be a place you go that inspires you, that challenges you, that opens the doors to new ideas and new possibilities. And that's the internet that I want to help build one remarkable brick at a time. <laughs>